In recent days, Yazidi women, men, and children have fled for their lives. And I believe the United States of America cannot turn a blind eye. We can act carefully and responsibly to prevent a potential act of genocide. That was President Obama in August 2014 talking about a tragedy that was then unfolding in northern Iraq as ISIS attacked the Yazidis, a religious minority there. The Yazidis had sought safety from the terrorists at the top of a mountain, Mount Sinjar, but ISIS surrounded the mountain and left the Yazidis with two choices, as Obama explained. Descend the mountain and be slaughtered, or stay and slowly die of thirst and hunger. At the same time, one of the world's largest concrete manufacturers, a French company called Lafarge, was paying ISIS so that it could continue to operate a cement plant in the area that ISIS had seized. These two events collided in a suit brought last year by the U.S. Department of Justice, which ended in Lafarge pleading guilty and paying nearly $800 million in fines. This week, a landmark civil lawsuit was filed seeking restitution from Lafarge for the Yazidi victims of ISIS crimes. Joining me now for an exclusive interview are international human rights lawyer Amal Clooney, who is one of the lead lawyers on the suit as well as the lead plaintiff, a Yazidi woman and Nobel Peace Prize recipient named Nadia Murad. She is the author of The Last Girl, My Story of Captivity and My Fight Against the Islamic State. I'm pleased to welcome both of you back to the show. It is such a pleasure to see you, but there's such an important uh, uh, case. Uh, just give us, as you're the lawyer, give us the, 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 the facts of the case. What did Lafarge actually do? So thank you, Fareed, for having us. Um, the facts of this case are really shocking. Um, so as you said, just when the genocide um, against the Yazidis was beginning in Iraq and uh, that ISIS committed, uh, this company um, that had already been funding ISIS for a year um, actually ramped up its support for ISIS. And, um, you know, the, the invasion began on the 3rd of August 2014. Um, uh, just days later, Lafarge was negotiating uh, a new deal with ISIS, um, not just to keep the factory going, but to actually split its profits, give them a share of the cake, um, as they put it. They were negotiating the terms um, of, of this deal on the 15th of August, uh, when ISIS attacked Nadia's village, when six of her brothers were executed and when her mother was executed, uh, they actually agreed, this cement company, one of the largest in the world, agreed to uh, giving ISIS better terms in this profit-sharing arrangement that they were entering into, um, ultimately agreeing to give ISIS 10% of its cement and 25% of the value of its raw materials. I mean, they are watching these images unfolding um, in front of them, uh, the factory that Lafarge was operating through its subsidiary in Syria was just 52 miles away from Raqqa, which was the center of the slave trade um, that uh, the Yazidis became subjected to, the women and young girls. In the uh, groundbreaking prosecution that the Department of Justice brought against this company, um, the company admitted that it gave almost $6 million to ISIS and to a related group, the Al Nusra Front. Um, they admit that they agreed to, to provide cement, which reportedly was used by ISIS to build tunnels in which Western hostages and Yazidis were held and tortured. So, uh, you know, this is an absolutely shocking set of circumstances. We commend the Department of Justice for criminally prosecuting this company in what was the first ever prosecution under a statute that um, allows prosecutors to go after companies that provide material support um, and conspire with terrorist groups. Um, but the prosecution resulted in this huge fine, as you say, three quarters of a billion dollars. None of that money has gone to the victims, not one dollar. Um, so the attorney general has the discretion to redirect some of those funds to the victims, and we hope that he will do so. We've made a request for that. Um, but we've also filed this lawsuit um, in the Eastern District District of New York, uh, seeking on behalf of Nadia as our lead plaintiff, but also over 400 other Yazidi Americans um, to get compensation from Lafarge uh, for assisting in terrorist violence. Nadia, what would you do with the, the money? Let us assume the attorney general does direct some, but let's assume the, the, the suit is successful. What are the needs of the people who, um, who have been affected so, so terribly by ISIS? 
you know, having this company, uh, like holding them accountable and uh, having them uh, compensate uh, those who have suffered because of their support to ISIS, it, it's really important. Uh, so many of of these people in 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 the U.S., you see this. Uh, they have family members uh, still. Uh, some of them have family members in captivity. Some have family members who have returned back to their homeland, but they struggle to rebuild their lives. And I'm hoping that this will help them to uh, their family members to rebuild their lives, but also to be able to go back because it's been almost 10 years and more than 200,000 Yazidis are still uh, displaced uh, inside their own country in Iraq. Uh, they can't afford to go back and rebuild their uh, houses. Amal, this was quite a, 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 an effort, as you've pointed, the size of the, of the, the suit, but also the complexity. Um, you went to Nebraska to find plaintiffs for this suit. Tell, tell us about that. That's right. So the plaintiffs are all U.S. citizens. Um, and, you know, we sort of had worked out the legal theory of the case. We, of course, were tracking what was happening um, in the criminal proceedings. And, uh, you know, we were ready to go with the case. We just needed to find uh, our clients and plaintiffs. And we discovered that there's a big community of Yazidis uh, in Nebraska. So, um, you know, I think Yazidis know, of course, that I've been working with this community on multiple accountability efforts for years now. We didn't tell them what it was about, but we said, can you please gather in this hall um, at this time, you know, this lawyer's coming uh, to, to Lincoln. And um, I started to explain what was possible. You know, this is the first meaningful chance for compensation for, you know, for these um, victims of ISIS. More and more people started coming and filling the hall, and I extended the trip. Um, and it's it's amazing to see sort of laid out in this in this court document 427 names, and we expect that more people will come forward as well. And we are back with human rights lawyer Amal Clooney, a lead lawyer on a new case against a French company for aiding and abetting ISIS. Joining her is the lead plaintiff in the case, Nadia Murad. Nadia, when you think about the, all the uh, challenges you have had, I mean, you have managed to, you, you were sold into the sex uh, trade by, by ISIS. And now look at you, you're, I mean, obviously you've won the Nobel Prize, but you're also a student at American University. I think about the first time I met you, you could barely speak a word of English. You're now writing papers in sociology in English. What do you think made it possible for you to have the kind of grit and determination to to move out of this, out of the shadows of the, this tragedy, into the, the the kind of work you're doing now. I've decided to share my story at the very beginning when I survived because I saw the evil of ISIS and it was important for the world to. Uh, you know, to remind the world about the horrific crimes ISIS committed against uh, Yazidis. And in, in order to prevent uh, this from happening again, I had to share my story. And I felt responsible because I was lucky enough to survive, but my nieces who were with me were later killed by ISIS uh, in captivity, and they didn't make it. And when you make it and when you survive, you just feel this burden and, and the guilt of going out there and sharing your story. And later to learn that, you know, such corporations directly supported ISIS in their crimes, war crimes, it was just sickening and, and unbearable. You know, I to me, it's I, just, I think that's one of the sort of really shocking features of this whole sort of episode is that, you know, Neither the armed groups nor their financiers expect to face accountability, and you can see that by just how brazen they are. So literally, ISIS wrote down its plan for genocide. It explained why, under its warped interpretation of Islam, it was okay to rape Yazidis and, and try to destroy Yazidis. And equally, this company,